Well, I thought I should point out the obvious to people. Um, you know, there tends to be multiple definitions for most things in life. Um, empirically trying to state the one thing is explicitly something and not anything else is like looking into a dictionary at the word love and going, but it only means this. It only means between a man and a woman with the intent of having a baby. No, love means whatever you want. So do most words and everything else like that. It's called um, subjective perspective. And mathematics, while is made to be as empirical as possible and as less interpretive as possible, still has this apparent because mathematics mathematics boo, mathematics still requires communication and language in other forms. Let me give you a simple example. One times one is one when you're talking about in a cube grid, right? One in the top corner times one in the top corner, like we all did at school in a graph in a cube grid, squares, right, is uh, one square. But what we're talking about here is taking one vertical line and one horizontal line and then multiplying those together to get one square. So the output of what we're getting is not the same as what we put in. So you've got one line and one line, and apparently one line multiplied by one line equals one square not one times one equals one that's how that works the other way that i wanted to point out to people is in the case of a relationship between classically say a man and a woman right one man multiplied by one woman sometimes interpreted as spits out another one and you have three so one times one equals three. But that's the same as going one times one, or sorry, one plus one, man plus woman equals baby. But you don't just get, by putting man plus woman next to each other, a third baby. You have to kind of multiply with each other <laughs> to create a third. <laughs> eh? <laughs> you see? Multiple ways to interpret these things. It's not... Try to remember while you're navigating the world out there. Um, emotions are an indication of a shutting down brain. And that doesn't mean that anybody with emotion doesn't know what they're talking about. Certain emotions do. And just because somebody is not displaying any emotion doesn't mean they're not having an internal chaotic circumstance. Like I watch the... Um, interpretation video, sorry, the um, reply video from um, Neil deGrasse to Terence. And uh, in the video, I don't know, I, I would need to find a, um, a body language expert out there. If there's anybody who can do a body language expert on um, Neil deGrasse Tyson in that video, that would be fantastic because my general assumption based on what he was showing in his body language there and, and behind the subtlety, subtle cues of his external verbal communication was that he was extremely nervous and um, felt attacked. And I don't just mean that in terms of, a, oh, well, I'm a, I'm a respected scientist and I shouldn't be attacked. He's, he's clearly pointing out to Terence that Terence shouldn't be concerned about being attacked because that's what scientists do, and yet that's clearly what he's doing as well. He's going, oh, well, I'm, I'm not attacking him. I'm, I'm just pointing it out. And it's like, bro. He's a scientist. He's just telling, being critical with you, just like you're being critical with him. You can't cram things into a box like the system wants you to be. Reality is analog. It is not digital. We all know this. We all know this. We all know this. We have scales for everything, okay? Every time you do a feedback survey, it's on a scale, isn't it? You know, it's not a yes or a no, very few questions are yes or a no in those circumstances. It's a not so much or a, yeah, pretty, pretty likely, all of that sort of thing. One to ten, how much did you appreciate the service? And then they take that data and they cut it out and go, okay, only the nines and the tens will consider to be successful feedbacks. So we had 58 successful feedbacks out of 
say, 100. We need to do better. Whereas in actuality, that interpretation is not reality. Reality is that you had a shit ton of feedback and all of the negative feedback is just as very important. And this is what ticks me off most about businesses. Your negative feedback is some of your more important feedback, just like Neil deGrasse Tyson was trying to point out, including all my negative feedback that I get as well. I take it on board, I listen in and I process it all. It doesn't mean that I agree, but that's the point, okay? Being able to hold multiple perspectives at once while being able to be human, have a small amount of emotional investment and passion to keep driving you forward out of curiosity and, and focus, right? Motivation. These things are not so apparent to some people at the moment. It seems to be missing from the general psyche of the world right now. That's like, whoa, emotions, simple... I'm just starting to ramble now. The point was that multiplication can be taken in multiple terms of reference, and that reference point then changes the definition of that. So before you slam somebody about whether they're right or wrong, try to ask them in much more detail about explicitly what they mean. And if it's confusing you and still triggering you, get them to explain even more and ask questions. Give them your interpretation of your information back and ask them to see if you have it accurate. It's not a narcissist, it might be considered a narcissistic trait, constantly over trying to empower, overpower conversation with your own perspective, but it's also a very effective communication method if used appropriately. I get what you're saying, but I understand you're talking about something that's very nuanced here, it's something that's very technical, so I need to repeat back to you what I'm understanding to see if I'm missing anything and I need you to listen in to see if I've got my perspective of what you're trying to give to me appropriately because we all have different internal dictionaries doesn't matter how many languages you speak or um, interpretation languages written languages like legalese or, or slang all, all of these different ways in which we interpret the world need to be laid out in the table in front of us when we're trying to communicate with each other. And they need to be objectively looked at without any raw trauma jumping out into the fray to say, oh, but what about me? Which is all that I hear and all of this sort of stuff. Now, I've got no investment in any of this. I just thought, you know, hey, there's a clear piece of information people are missing out there in all of these videos that are slamming Terence, which is that apparently one times one can only ever mean one thing, and yet none of these people that I've seen talking about it point out that the one times one thing that they're talking about is flawed in its beginning anyway, and that is that one line times one line equals one square. So one times one equals a different one, not the same one. Right? Parent and a parent come together, multiplying creates the same one, but a different one. You see? It's like it's pretty standard and basic stuff when you get out of the ego attachment, which is just agitation and investment to the circumstance and look at it empirically by rolling around in the mud with it. You need to be able to do these things. And that's a big problem with the established scientific method at the moment is the lack of flexibility the over invested academic political jargon that goes on oh well you know he's clearly suffering from the drunning kruger effect i always mispronounce it dunning drunning or whatever it is which people also forget goes the other way it's not just about people who are coming from the bottom and going up the drunning kruger effect also affects people at the top looking back down so I made a comment on one of the videos out there about how Neil deGrasse commenting about the Dunning Kruger effect is very entertaining because of the fact that he's laboring, seems to be laboring under it as well, right? He's over overconfident of his capacity to interpret information so much so that he doesn't even want to investigate it. His overconfidence is blindsiding him to a potential that he himself admits in his review of Terence's paper, the one they talk about in the content, whereby he says at the end of the paper, these last few pages escape me, as in, you're too complicated for me. I don't understand what you that, that spells it out clearly right there. That means I'm not qualified to comment on your paper. 
because I don't understand what you're talking about. I can't offer a perspective because I have no perspective to offer. I don't understand it. That's exactly the point of it all. Put up or shut up. Conversation happens for a certain amount of time until somebody has to put up or shut up. And that's exactly what Terence was asking for. He wants to put up. Let the man put up. If he doesn't put up, he'll shut himself up like everybody does because he'll go back to his lab and he'll keep working out the bugs of whatever he's got or he'll scrap the whole thing and try something else. That's the point. Right? Enough ranting. You get the point. <laughs> the multiple points there. That's the recording button. Ah, oh, there it is. So, peace out.